the fact that the simplicity tools are lateral thinking tools, could you explain how simplicity lateral thinking is different than straight lateral thinking? Sure. Um, in the example that was uh, just given, Natalie, the um, the technique that we were using with uh, provocative um, amputation, uh, it, it's it's taking the provocation literally. In lateral thinking, we, we don't take a provocation literally. What we do in, um, in lateral thinking is we use the provocation almost as if it were a stepping stone in order to move uh, to, to ideas. And so in lateral thinking, the, the technique is properly called provocation and movement. And interestingly, in the, um, in the simplicity workshop, we, we actually use the provocations as, as a direct means of generating ideas. And um, uh, another example of that would be the wishful thinking provocation uh, in lateral thinking. Well, we, we make a, um, an idealized state, and then we try to get ideas off of it. Um, in simplicity, we're, we're trying to take an idealized state and actually try to create it, and uh, just, just to do so almost literally. So, so it's a, a slightly different approach, uh, and, and that's one of the, uh, the, the differences of how we're using lateral in simplicity. Uh, another difference is um, we're continually asking the question in simplicity, does it make it simpler? In, in lateral thinking, we're searching for an abundance of ideas, and um, we, we don't really care, at least at the stage of generation, as to whether the ideas um, have value or don't have value, whether they fit or they don't fit. We will treat and assess those ideas after we get them. In simplicity, though, we're, we're almost constantly asking, as soon as the idea is generated, does it make things simpler? And if the answer is no, then we have to throw it out. Um, so so, so it's, a, a, it's a more disciplined uh, approach to creativity than um, lateral thinking is. And um, it, it was interesting during the, uh, the very first workshop, um, it was one that I co-facilitated with Edward, and there were some very, very rich ideas that came out of that workshop. We, we had a whole group of uh, De Bono trainers there, and so people were, were pretty, pretty, in fact, they were very good at generating ideas. And um, many, many of these incredibly wonderful ideas just literally had to be thrown out because they didn't make anything simpler. And um, so, so there's a rigor to simplicity that, that, that I find uh, quite interesting. Yeah, it really gives a very specific focus on reducing complexity, um, which, uh, you know, is not easy to do. And so it would take a great discipline to keep remembering that what you're tasked to do. Who are some organizations you have worked with applying simplicity, and what can you tell us about the results they're getting? Um, here in the States, the, uh, some of the companies I've worked with are uh, PPG. Uh, based in Pittsburgh. We had one of their uh, quality experts um, involved in that particular workshop. We, we had um, Emerson Climate Control, a division of Emerson Corporation, and um, this was a uh, manufacturing-based firm in uh, Ava, Missouri, and they have attended the, um, the Simplicity Workshop and made good use of it. And in the UK, where, where I do a lot of work, um, Two uh, organizations stand out. One of them is the Darby Foundation Trust Hospitals, where they are trying to um, um, reduce the costs of the, uh, the public health care that, that's provided in the UK. And so they've, they've found uh, simplicity a very useful tool to help them do that. And there's also the, uh, the Charity Commission. Uh, the Charity Commission is a... Um, a government body that makes sure that charities within the uh, United Kingdom are properly licensed and um, are following all of the rules of a nonprofit organization. So those are um, four organizations that, that kind of come to mind quickly. Can you give us an example, perhaps from the Charity Commission, of how they're applying the tools and what types of results they're getting? Uh, sure. The, yeah, the, the Charity Commission, um, it's an old organization. It's been in existence for over 100 years. And um, as, as Edward de Bono says, things don't naturally get simpler. They, they, they get more complex. And as things evolve, um, they, they have a tendency to, to evolve more, um, more complexly. 
and um, the Charity Commission has um, amassed a, a variety of rules and regulations and ways of handling processes and dealing with new clients and existing clients. And um, there's also been, in 100 years, obviously, huge uh, changes in technology, just communication technology. And so trying to take in account um, all of those various means of communicating with, with their clients, um, I think things have gotten out of hand. And so what they're using uh, simplicity for is, is to find a way of reducing the complexity of their organization, uh, one, to make it easier for their clients, and two, uh, to reduce redundancy and cost within their own organization, to reduce, as the, the lean uh, practitioners would say, waste. And um, they, they have applied it to areas such as how does a, um, a charity that um, has a new um, managing director, um, how do we record that and process that? Um, how do we uh, keep the licenses of the, um, uh, the charities up to date? How do we, a um, very practical thing, how do we uh, pay our employees when, when they submit expense reports in, in a much simpler uh, more efficient manner. And so, so they've applied it to a, a variety of internal and external uh, processes, and um, we're starting to see some good results from it. And you mentioned that they apply lean um, within their organization. Is simplicity part of their lean efforts, and how do those two initiatives work together? Um, First of all, uh, w with simplicity and lean, I, I think that they, they can very much complement each other. Uh, in the instance of the Charity Commission, uh, however, they, they had some internal difficulties trying to embrace lean, which is one of the reasons why they um, look towards simplicity as, as a different approach. Um, I do not think that, that they are antithetical one to the other. Um, it may be, however, for organizations that are not manufacturing based, um, simplicity may offer a more ready way to start getting into um, the, the whole notion of, of lean thinking. Um, lean, by its very nature, it be, because of its uh, basis in Toyota manufacturing, uh, has a manufacturing basis to it. It uses a lot of manufacturing terminology. And, and it also uses uh, Japanese terminology. And um, I, I think some of the people at the Charity Commission just had difficulty uh, embracing the, the terminology and the cultural differences that were there. So for them, um, simplicity offered a, a, a faster way of getting into the, the whole idea of lean thinking. Okay, thanks, Chuck. Um, that's sure. helpful.